Hello YouTube, Blue Matonin here, and welcome to episode number 11 of this Let's Play Total War Three Kingdoms as Gong Du. Uh, where we left off last time, we will go to our trusty diplomacy map mode. Um, we have peace now with Gong Sun um, Shuxiang here in the, pa uh, in the south. Uh, obviously Han Empire is still at war with. Um, Dong Pei Shan, I want to, uh, before, I mean, I do want to eventually be peaceful with her. Um, I think she wanted peace, if I remember right, but she has very limited land yet. I mean, she has two passes here, which are within my land, and she has, um, basically just these two settlements left. An iron mine, which is, uh, and the city of Hidong. So I, I don't see why I would make peace with her when I can just finish off the, her last commandery and just knock her out militarily. Um, obviously the two passes I would like to get rid of also, so she doesn't just have those sitting in the middle of my land. But um, I do, basically what I want is I want peace with her eventually because I, I have a new, um, you know, looter issue. I didn't know looters could appear down here, so I got picked off here at this city. Uh, 8,000 gold just down the drain because literally I, I did it and then immediately the city got taken. Um, so we're kind of rushing with this army here in um, forced march mode as quick as we can this direction to, to try to take it out. Um, or get get our, get the set, get the city back basically, um, but it's taking this army a little bit to move, uh, quite a little while. Maybe I can. Oh, we already have the campaign movement map, <laughs> movement range. Um, oh, so we're getting that army over there. Uh, very frustrating. Very frustrating. Just wasted money in the north. I mean, these looters are really a big pain. Um, but we do have our full army here in Hidong. We could move on immediately to the city. Um, we do have an army down here that might go after Luo Yang. Um, might be worth going after them first. Because, but it, I have to cross back over the river. I really need multiple forces. Um, you know, having to basically waste a whole army in the north, I just can't afford that right now. Yeah, I might just have to, I might just have to forget about the north and leave that to be a... Yeah, we're going to cancel that construction, take the money back. Um, I might just have to abandon the north, leave this to be a, uh, a looter's area for the time being, because I really do need the second army in the south. Um, it's going to take a couple turns to get there, but it would just be so much easier. Like, I want to take the city, but I want to defend over here, and it's just i got to like move all over the place, and with the river, it takes like multiple turns. But... I think um, we can give up Luo Yang right now. That's fine. That's just a trade port. Let's go take the city. Focus your rage. I think that's Hold more important. Them. So we'll do a nice easy fight. Brother, today we fight for all right, so we have uh, yeah, quite a bit of towers there. Uh, probably don't want to go on that side. Like three la layers of towers. If we go to tactical map, yeah, I mean, there's... Get these sides over here have much less towers to do without no reason to run up the gut there with multiple layers of towers facing right at us. So we'll we'll set up over here and this will be uh, this will be where we advance into the city from. Um, yeah, we'll take we'll do our usual thing here and take our fire arrow archers. Have them advance into a position. We can, where we can knock out these towers, nice and easy. There go the towers firing, but that's okay, it's worth it to knock them out. And once they're in position, go ahead and hit the towers, please. There we go, nice big volleys. And that should do, yeah, right there, right away, it does a ton of damage. Let's go knock out the other one really quick. There we go. Alright. So now that that's done, now we can set up our archers in a bit more of an advantageous position. Actually, we can set up all of our archers there. We just need to stay out of the range of those guys. Yeah, we can definitely do that. So all of our archers advance, please. We'll take our infantry. Infantry here, group them together. You guys, for the time being, can go stand right behind the archers. And, uh... Two generals, group guard the archers in the front. And then we got our cab. 
Uh, cavalry. Maybe we just go... Yeah, let's go and just try to sweep behind them. So our archers are now just on fire will, and they're just shooting on these guys in the city. They have a little bit of range block, block chance, but they should be able to do some damage. Yeah, we'll take our generals with us, too. You guys go this way. Give our give our cavalry a little bit more of a, a force to be reckoned with. Alright, yeah, let's let these guys finish just getting into a nice firing position here. Alright, generals with the cavalry, you guys can be one group. Yeah, see, they're moving guys back, but why don't you go first and foremost, take these towers. Yeah, archers here are just demolishing, doing good damage to those troops in the front. There we go, why don't you go get the other towers as well, now come this way, please. There we go, yeah. Cavalry, you can set up a nice little line right here. Look at all that. Look at the just constant hail of shots that the archers are putting in on those guys. Alright. Why don't we go charge their cavalry? And once we get this tower, there we go. We can move our generals behind. But yeah, our cavalry, let's go engage theirs. General's moving in. Let's go and help out the cavalry from behind. There we go. And use your specials. Yeah, should be on the quick side. There's only nine left now. All right, now we can yeah we can move in with our cavalry. And go after some of these swordsmen and the uh, archers that are in the city. Alright, my archers, let's advance up, please. Yeah, we're in a bit of a melee now with our with our general. And the rest of their archers, are, or infantry, are moving back away from the gate. Why don't we pull them out? We don't really need to do that. Let's take my best infantry units. Just four of them. You guys move into the city, please. Oh, are you off your horse? Shoot. Alright, he's off his horse, so you just continue fighting. And yeah, we'll get my faction leader back in there. My archers reopened up fire. Nice. There we go. Use your specials again. Boom. That archer unit should be getting hit pretty hard. They don't they don't have any range block chance. Alright, we'll get my cav back in now. Why not? Alright, some of my archers are out of ammo, that's fine. Cavalry way out of there. Generals, you can just you can keep fighting. Keep doing your thing. Here's my good infantry. Let's just start moving in with them. Cavalry, get in that way. Alright, we'll be able to use our killing ground again in a second here. Get in the fray when you use it, please. Alright, whatever. He wants to stand over there, or you can just use it there. Good enough. Attack! At the ready! Charge! G Warriors! G Warriors, come help out with the infantry, please. Look, the enemy run! Craven! Alright, my cavalry, let's go after their cav. Stand ready! Jet or their archers, general, same thing, please. Mm 
There we go. There's my cavalry coming in from behind. Should get a nice charge in on the archers. Oh, yeah. Really nice. Alright, they're all broken. They're getting out of here. One step closer to a victory. Calvary! These guys are uh, shaken, but they're not routing. Come on, they, there's no way they should be able to sustain this. Who's running? Guardians of the Lands? Get out of here. There we go. Okay. Nice first fight. Really used our range to, to our advantage there. Alright, so we have the city. Some nice cash. So we have the city of Hidong. Um, rebellion must serve me. Oh, they had a rebellion. So I think that, yeah, this is, the, this is her last province other than the passes. So, sort of what we can do, like this is Han Empire, right? Yeah, so yeah, what I would like to do is I would like to take this iron mine and then just keep this as my southern border for the minute while I sort out the looters and, uh, and whatever else. Um, obviously, this could be a potential uh, enemy down the road, Zhang Jian. Jian. Um, no, wait, we are at war right now. Right. So, but well, this army is probably going to take back the city next turn, right? Um, which is a bummer. But the pass will be harder to take. It has a better garrison. Better garrison than, yeah, that coastal trading port. That army, yeah, that army's, you know, it's, it's got some weak units and weak archers and some G, but the, the two generals will beat any garrison, most likely. Um, you know, this, arm, this unit's out of movement points anyway. I mean, if I wanted to raise an army, I could raise back He Yi and his whole force, um, which I do want to do. I'm going to bring him back in. Uh, after he lost that last fight. And I'll bring him probably in in the pass right here. And then... Because this will take at least a turn or two to defend. Yeah, I think we raise back in. We spend our money. Let's raise back in he Yi And his, you know, full retinue. At the pass right there. And then he can fight with... Um, with the garrison in a defensive battle, it will take, what, three turns? So it'll take at least one, two turns to get there. So, you know, we should get some good replenishment in with those troops before then, before this army gets there. And not, this army's not even full strength anyway. Um, okay. So that makes me feel a little bit more stable. And then, I mean, if we wanted to add a second general on, I mean, we could put in Bay Bay Shao, um, a healer. Um, he's a legend. We already have a healer. I mean, it would be kind of cool to put in, like, Huang Xiao, um, you know, and get a, a Scholar in there. Uh, also, like, he's another Legendary General, and we get two Legendary Generals in the same force right here, uh, who do like each other, um, which is good. I think that might be worth it. I th is he on a assignment currently? I believe so. Um, Huang Xiao, three more turns of supervised construction. Where? In Anding? Am I building actively in Anding? Yeah, I mean, I'm building the tool workshop, and I think my plan was was to upgrade the city to the next level. Um, once the tool workshop was done, so two, two turns, and use his his the assignment to do so. Um, yeah, I might keep him there. I don't think I need to have him mustering in immediately. I mean, how much would it take to recruit him in? Twenty eight hundred. I mean, I'm gonna. We're going to have enough money next turn. I think we should do that. So I'm going to I'm gonna go ahead and cancel that uh, assignment, which means next turn he will be available, and I'm going to bring him into this army with he Yi, and we'll get, uh, we'll get two generals um, into the force right there, uh, which is perfect. So, yeah, so I'm happy with that. We do need to up our food production places, so maybe if we could get like a you know, farming upgrade or something, like one of, you know, get food food production up, that would be a useful upgrade to do. Um, so I'm going to save my money for that so I can in, uh, bring him in. 
And yeah, we only have and then build and going. We don't have any really, so we're kind of getting a little more strapped for cash. Spending 8,000 here and then losing the city definitely hurt. Um, so yeah, we're actually going to bring this guy back. Yeah, we're going to go after the looters with this guy. This will still will stay our northern defense force. Um, so I think I'm going to end the turn there because I don't, I don't want to spend money on anything else because I want to use that money to bring in the general next turn. So that's exactly what we're going to do. And let's move on to turn number two of this video. So I assume Luo Yang will fall. Oh, they just put it under siege. Great, that gives me even more time to muster in a force. That is that is totally fine with me. I don't know why they wouldn't just attack it. It's just the garrison. Um, oh, well, we we got attacked by, I guess, these this rebel these, these rebels uh, brewing over here. That's kind of funny. Yeah, now we have the really weak, but, you know, still city garrison on our side. So, yeah, we can take them out. All right. Um, honestly, I don't even think it's worth setting up a defense. I mean, we're just going to go out and immediately meet them uh, on the field of battle. So let's go ahead and let's get... I mean, we don't even need to use these weak city garrison units, truly. They're just not necessary. I mean... Anyway, I just kind of fit all these guys, like, in here. I just want to move him out of the city the moment this starts. And then, yeah, archer units. Can I put them in here? No, these are all buildings I can't place them in. Okay. So we're gonna just start the battle. Archers, move outside. Infantry, go and guard them. Just get everybody running outside immediately. We'll fast forward this for a second here as everyone funnels out. Um, I'm going to decline just because I want to see what she has. Really weak. Yeah, why don't we, we can do a duel. I just don't want to do it with my faction leader. He's a little weak. Yeah, my guys aren't all going to get out of the city in time. It's kind of dumb. Should have thought about that. We'll go ahead and do that duel. You are pitiful. I have seen greater skill from and yeah, we'll use some of our infantry here to surround them. General, why don't you go in and help? Infantry, Steal go and yourself. surround them. Your general needs a there we go. Duel is taking place. Feel the fury of the earth. <sighs> Ready. Yeah, archers, we don't really need you. Just just get the heck out of there. Take heed, warriors. Ready. Alright, yeah, she's down at 13k. We're still at 20k health. We are good. The rest of the army's routing, it'll just be the, uh, the rest of this fight. Yeah, the rest of the army's routing now. Can't, uh, what happens if I interrupt the duel? Uh, I didn't even know you could do that. Alright, I'll just go get everyone out of here. You got it, dude. Come on. Belittle yourself with your words. General, I'll just go take out the rest of their guys. Nice and easy. There's four peasant spearmen left over here. Probably won't escape the towers. Alright, towers are really hitting my Did own men here. Because of this six yellow turban warriors. Can we just take oh, them out, please? How witty. How very witty. Alright, use your special and let's finish this. There we go. Die if you cannot surrender. Stand ready. Alright, let's just take out a little bit of that peasant spearman unit so it doesn't come back, and then we're, we should be good. Alright. Then battle. Alright, well at least there's no more rebellion in the province. Um, and we actually got some decent money from that. Yeah, 694. Uh, I'll just take the additional money. 
with another 128. Sweet. All right. Sun C has requested Wang Wang join their war. Okay. Requesting a bunch of people. Hong Kong, a bunch of people are requesting and inviting the coalitions. Okay. Sieges and blockades. Yes, I know. Killed in battle. Great. Ancillaries gains. Warriors. Reinforced leather. Okay. So this army is primed and ready to go and take the last province, the Toolmaker. That's her last province other than a pass province. So let's go ahead and let's move in and let's take this immediately. This should be an interesting... Uh, yeah, we got some towers to, to deal with as per usual. So why don't we get, again, we got our fire archers moving up. We got our regular archers moving up as well. So yeah, they got a, it's a great garrison. It's not a, you know, it's a strong one. So why don't we get our normal archers in position, our fire archers with a little bit more range up there as well, and just immediately take out those towers. That will be priority number one. You guys, let's start firing at that first tower. We don't need to run that far forward, actually. You can position here. Uh, you guys position slightly more forward as well. Fire at that tower, please. And you guys fire at that tower. And we will... Uh, that one's already at 100%. Alright, so why don't you guys fire at that tower then. And yeah, we'll take out just this whole array of towers here. Right off the bat. And then these archers in the front, my weaker archers, like these peasant ones... You can just fire at whoever the heck you want. Fire at will. Generals, let's go up there to defend them. And our whole infantry block. You guys can position yourselves, like, up here. Out of range of those, yes. Perfect. Now you guys... Yeah, you guys can move up to a bit of a more forward position then. Now that the towers are all done. And fire whoever the heck you want to fire at. Have fun with it. All archers should be firing their arrows. Yeah, these guys are firing. You just, it's hard to see the uh, trails against the um, uh, what's it called? Against the white snowy background. But yeah, archers are all taking pretty good shots here. Alright. You guys, let's halt you for a second as my infantry run through. And we'll let the infantry all engage and get in position here. Yeah, they have no archers in defense, which is quite interesting, actually. Alright, all my infantry is in position. Archers, why don't we just fire at this G Militia unit? They, uh, they have no range block chance, so... They should, they should be knocked out pretty quickly, I think. And, alright, that actually, it looks like some of them are actually starting to leave the settlement, maybe? No, it doesn't actually, actually they're not. They just kind of held right at the gatehouse. Yeah, we can, we can really do some good damage here on these, uh, cavalry units. Oh yeah, look at just barrage of arrows coming in. Keep them coming, guys. Yeah, just non-stop, non-stop stream of firing. I love it. And you, you guys, you three. The men have no ammunition. I don't know. Or, I don't know where we want yet. I'm just gonna put you over here. Alright, we'll just put them on fire. Will here for the end. Who's out of ammo? These guys. No, they still have shots. Who doesn't have ammunition yet? Left. I don't know. Some of these units are starting to route, which is nice. Yeah, so we'll just continue letting the stream of uh, arrow shots come in here and do damage. The men are out of ammunition. Oh, this spear unit actually turned back. Make ready. Run, run. So we'll go ahead and I guess we'll just fight them with, uh, with these guys. They should, uh, yeah, they should fall pretty quick there. <clears throat> Stand ready. 
they don't have any shots left. Alright, you guys don't have any shots left, just pull out. You have any shots left? No, just get out of there. You guys? Nope. Alright, out of there you go. Archers, reigning archers, please position. Oh, this unit just ran out of ammo as well. You can get the heck out of there. You guys, fire at that G militia with no range block chance just to finish this off here. Finish off your shots. Oh no, get out of that way. I don't want you over there. Those towers are going to start hit, are hitting you. Yeah. The yellow sky awaits. Alright, they should be out of shots any second now. There it is. Alright, they're out of ammunition. Let's get out of there. Alright, <clears throat> time to advance um, with our guys. So let's. Generals, go hit the spear guards. This side. Go charge in that direction. Go charge in. Cavalry, be ready for when I need you. Yeah, we'll just try to knock these guys out here right at the start. Right at the gatehouse. Just charge right in. There we go. Alright, they're all routed now. Here comes more cavalry. Let's go hit them. This side might be a bit more of a slog without the generals, but we'll push through. Generals are both off their horses now, too. Alright, let's get all this, all this infantry in the city, please. Come on, guys. Cavalry, let's get you inside. So why does this hold up at the gatehouse? Come on. Oh, alright, now it's just a big slog up here. That's not what I wanted. Um, you guys actually... Leave the city, please. I want you over here. And we're gonna loop you around behind. Yeah, this is this became a really annoyingly frustrating slog of fighting. Is I don't know why this infantry is all like fall. Oh, this is a retreating units or something. Come on, if I tell you guys to go this way. Go this way. Come on. How are they doing over here? All right, they got one to route. Now I just got the sabers left. Let's go, guys! Come on. I'm gonna seal off their escape here. One step closer to victory. Yeah, go hit the heavy lances. There we go. They all started routing, and now cavalry's around the backside. You guys just like all enter the city, please. But yeah, yeah, this cavalry will just clean up whatever's still escaping over here. How are we doing on this side? All right, they're they're broken. Oh, they're about to be broken. Yeah. Good job, guys. All right, finally, these units are like making it into the city. Like these these dang routing guys are just so annoying. Yeah, stay on these guys until they fully break. Please stay on that Saber Militia. Same with these guys. Alright. Yeah, let's make sure these guys are fully out of the fight. Go hit that cab. Yeah, just go up and hit that cavalry. You guys are really still just dueling down here with these dudes, huh? That cavalry doesn't say they shouldn't last too long. There's only one unit left. Go chase them down. You guys come up this side. Come on. Yeah, they'll get up that way. These guys will chase around that way. Okay, they they all rounded. All right, done. 
All right, so the iron mine is ours, Just and the commander is ours as well. We got. Come on, keep going, keep going. Five oh six. Yeah, we'll just occupy it if we want it. In time, they will Would be assassin. Us. Character wounded? No. Oh, that's annoying. So is he? Out? Yeah, he's out for one turn. Dang. All right, that's that's annoying. Wounds and deaths. Jeez. Traits gained, and he got scarred. Actually, okay, scarred's a good trait. <laughs> when <laughs> two plus two morale and attacking and some authority. All right, so that's okay. Um, yes, capture enemy capital. Commander resecured. He dong. All right. Yeah, so they, uh, this enemy, yeah, she only has these two past provinces left. That's it. Um, all right, we've solidified this border for the time being. And Tidong is a nice, uh, really nice commandery. You can see we're already making 629 each turn. Um, we get a lot from industry. 300 from industry from the mine, another 200 from the workshops. And then for some reason they have... Oh, labor family houses for income from commerce and income from industry industry bonus because we get the commerce from the trading board. So that's actually a smart building to build. Um, I stand corrected. Although I would think too, when we expand the set, when we, that, that's a great one to have. That's a great one to have. When we expand the settlement um, to the next level and unlock another building slot, we'll build the artisan, which gives us more base industry and commerce, along with this one that gives us the modifier for it, and we're just going to be pumping out money from the settlement. So that's. That's a great one. Hidong is is very good. I'm, I'm really happy with that. And um, it currently sits on a fairly protected border. I mean, we got Han Empire in the south um, and Zhang Jian in the east. Can we just like... Does she really need to be a war with me? Be short. She, she like barely wants it. I just don't know why she has to be a war with me. Like, what, is, you know, what does she want? I mean, could I like... Give her a spare ancillary that I have, like something, you know, like just a basic bow, just basic feather fan, and like, a, you know, something I have like two of, like one of those military G. Nope. What will make this work? Regular payment of, se of 713? No. Alright. That's fine. She doesn't want to make peace. That's okay for the time being. Um, we do have 5,009. Uh, we will take that money, and we will definitely do the plan here, which was to recruit in Huang Xiao and make a second really strong... Uh, we got a strong force here. Confirm. So this army now is is going to be like a legitimate force. Um, one thing I did check. What do we have as our... What do we have to do? We have to do an encampment fort for 8,000 gold. That's pretty nice. And uh, that's just reach the faction of rank and empowered. What encampment fort... Um, if I remember right, is up here, right? Yes, okay. So I want to, I should continue upgrading this building. It's only 1,000. Uh, let's continue upgrading that. We'll go towards the encampment for it, and that will give us more post-battle loot income, which is, of course, always nice as well. Um, this force probably is going to take Luo Yang this turn. I might just kind of let him do it, um, and then we could just take it back. Uh, I would prefer this force to be a little bit more... I mean, I could go and probably knock him out with this army, but I'd prefer for them to be a little more mustered in first. Um, we also have this light bow infantry archery masters that are taking up 320 upkeep per turn. Um, I can't recruit them, though, so I don't know if I should get... I don't really want to get rid of them. Um, but this, this the army makeup here is just kind of all over the place. So, like, we have Huang Xiao. Wait, what does he have? He has uh, an active buff, um, surprise attack for speed, and some uh, armor piercing and base damage. Uh, he has one with heaven, a passive buff that gives ranged damage. Um, so he doesn't have an attack. Okay, we also have... Um, yeah, this is a construction time thing. Um, income or industry and administered commandery. Yeah, he doesn't really have any good warrior ones, although he does have the ammunition. Um... The brilliant trait, which is which is really nice. Um, so I mean, we'll definitely hold on to the archery masters, I guess. But otherwise, we got the swords unit, two yellow turban warriors. We have a yellow turban horseman. That's like the anti missile cav. There's also one here, so that's fine. I guess now we have two of those. Um, if I'm adding in additional units, like what do I want to add in? I mean, there's where are these guys? Yellow sky heralds, a light axe infantry. 
Um, I mean, we could add in more range, get like, you know, two more units, two units of yellow turban archers uh, in there. Um, these guys don't seem like a great unit, really, to be honest with you. I mean, their morale was out. Oh, so they don't break their morale. They're 100 per Okay, that's a big thing. They're unbreakable. Um, but they have no missile defense. And their, you know, their base attack, their attack is is 10 base, 21 armor piercing. These guys, 23 and 8, it's pretty much the same thing. I had to hop up for about 15 minutes there on a call, so I'm it's going to take me a second to get right back into what we were doing. But I remember I was deciding what units to add in for the final two slots here for um, Point Shao's army. Uh, he does have, again, like, he does have nice boost, um, but brilliant for the archers. Um, he also has precision, which could be taken next, which is, you know, range firing rate. Um, but that's only when commanding. Um, I mean, I'm just trying to look at, like, what might be a good one next. You know, like, none of this, I mean, this is ranged armor piercing damage and ranged damage. Like, maybe, you know, he seems to be like he has some... You know, good archer buffs, and and I feel like I have one, two, three, four, five. I have like six units of infantry already. I feel like maybe I just give him two units of yellow turban archers and call it a day. That's exactly what we're gonna do. They're not that expensive. They don't take a ton of upkeep, and they're good units. So uh, we're gonna do that. All right, so that force uh, is mustering in, and if we wanted to add a third general in, we could add any of our three. They all that we have left. They all get along, uh, which is really, really nice. Um, but I do also have three assignment slots, um, and so I'd like to, like, you know, use those three for assignments, uh, if possible, um, instead of, you know, having them in the army. Because right now we have one healer. Yeah, this army has one healer, one um, veteran, right? He's a veteran. Or scholar, sorry. Um... And then what do we have left? We have uh, Ten Yu. He's the veteran. Um, yeah, that character's on the side. I know, but that's fine. Yeah, anyway, these are these are both healers. So we got the one veteran left. So maybe like Ten Yu would be a good one to add in as the as the third guy. Um, and we could always you know hire whenever a cheapo candidate comes in just for assignment purposes. So where is Ten Yu? Um, I don't really have the money to do it right now. But Tan Yu is doing surplus markets in Jingzhou. All right, there. Right. Oh, right. It's this one because that gives commerce and industry. So I could do um, right because surplus markets gives commerce and industry uh, income, which is obviously really really nice. Uh, this woman, Bei Bei Xiao, she has stimuli markets, which gives just commerce, but it's a bigger bonus to commerce. Um, we get uh, food from farming and income from peasantry. And uh, attract talent, which is starting rank for new recruits and everything. What about? Do I have a settlement? What's what's my biggest like food settlement? Anding with eleven. Yeah, Anding by far. So what if I actually put her on assignment in Anding with the employee volunteers? Uh, income from peasantry, which is the principal form of income here, as well as plus twenty five percent food from farming, um, which we have. Three there, another two there, another three there. I mean, it's this would be nice. All right, let's do this. We're gonna add her in on this city, and then Tan Tan Yu. I'm kind of thinking for the minute maybe we leave Tan Yu. Maybe we don't need to buff until we have more a little bit more of an economic base. Because if we add in Tan Yu into this force, that's immediately another two ten upkeep costs per turn. And then if I wanted to fill out the remaining four units, you know, we could be basically running our Per turn income down to almost zero. So I think um, I think with the two two forces, this this one should be powerful enough for the time being. Um, do I want to immediately move and actually save Luo Yang? I would have the garrison on my side. Um, I feel like I could probably take out this force. It's a if we get some duels going. This guy doesn't have the best of. Um, yeah, this guy doesn't have the best weapon or anything. We, you know, we could probably be able to do that. And she does not have a great weapon either. Unknown traits, though. 
let's just quickly let's quickly yeah. see these guys. This guy's already decked out. Yeah, he's got the 1.5k damage. What about you? You got matched Jan. That's a 1200 damage. Do I have a better weapon? This one probably does a little bit more damage. Um, but your fire rate is what? Your fire rate's 24. Okay. Yeah. And it gives plus 9 to instinct, minus 6 to expertise, whereas this gives plus 9 to resolve and plus 9 to expertise. Expertise gives what again? Melee evasion, construction cost, resolves health. I mean, the instinct, <clears throat> his damage isn't great. I mean, this is definitely a little bit more damage, right? I mean, we got 1,194. This one's pushing, yeah, 12. So let's do this, I guess. That bumps up his expertise and resolve. The instinct is just low, though. Um, he has his own armor. We don't have a horse to give him. He has Provincial Advisor right now, which gives uh, public appeasement. Assignment and reserves. That's not really great for military. Let's see if there's a better military one we can give them. Anything that gives instinct? Yes, but it's kind of a bad one. Um, <clears throat> is he a Lord of Virtue, Hung Shao? No, he is not. Okay, and really quick by reform, right? That four turns left for local governance. Uh, he's not a Lord of Virtue, so we don't need to give him one of these. We'll, we'll just leave him with his uh, resolve and authority. And then the book he has currently gives him a lot of authority and some satisfaction. It's kind of cavalry focused. So I really have nothing. All right, we got this one that can give him plus six, six instinct. Um, this could give satisfaction and some extra military supplies. I'm oh, sorry, resolve and some extra military supplies. Uh, replenishment for his own army. I think we got to just give him a little bit of an instinct buff. Just slightly. I think it's worth it. <clears throat> All right. All right, great. Um, so yeah, this force. Yeah, why don't we go save? Why don't we go save our cities? We don't need to completely retake it. All right, they retreated. Perfect. Um, we're not going to be able to catch them this turn. So why don't we just move into the city? Um, this obviously ruins my uh, mustering bonus for the troops, but they're still gaining thirty-two percent um, a turn, and they're in the settlement, which is great. Um, quick settlement check. Public order is mostly good. He Dong's right is new, so that's not good. Public order is actually pretty good across the land. Um, great, a lot of green, a lot of green. All right, good. So that army successfully defended the pass there, um, or the the settlements. We could go use them to take out that pass. We have this army over here, and then we have our army here in the north. Oish. Yeah, let's get over to friendly lands, please. All right, we're in friendly territory, so we're not losing a ton of military supplies now. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll get over here sooner rather than later. Okay, cool. Good. I think that's a pretty good turn. Um, let's go ahead and, yeah, we'll move on to the next one. Oh, before I do, uh, and Ding, they are making 11 food and 322 income. Let's see what that is next turn. 11 food and 322. All right, how is she responding? Did they just come and put the city right back under siege? That's kind of funny. I don't know why they broke it in the first place then. If they thought they could beat this force. All right, it's back to my turn. Some peace treaty, coalition, war, peace treaty, yellow turban war, join a war. Okay, and ding. We are now making 14 food and 565. That's huge. That's huge. That's over 200 more income per turn and another three food. That's really, really nice. Okay. Buildings, and we got the tool workshop done and ending as well. Oh. All right, so it's not all from peasantry. Uh, we also got the, the tool workshop done, which gives another 100 base income from um, industry, plus the 32% bonus. Uh, but that's nice regardless. Ready for duty, Zhang Kai. Great. Ancillaries gained. Uh... Ma Jua Meng got a Kurs Vestment. Okay. Um, this army... Oh, it actually... Sorry, it took to the to the sea. So I can't... Can I attack that? Where the right just uh, it says it'll be a decisive victory. I can't... I have to delegate it because it's a naval fight. Right? 
Okay. All right, let's delegate it. It says decisive victory, so I should have this one. Let the people rejoice. And it was. It was a. It was a decisive victory. I lost 147 men, whereas they lost basically their entire army. That's great. Yeah, we'll take the 434, and, and that knocks hand. them out. Okay. Awesome. And they retreated a little bit down the river here. Um, character gains ranked Quang Shao really quick. All right. So now we can definitely. I mean, we could give him this, right? Um, which gives a the active buff for range block chance. I don't think that's necessary. I think maybe we give him, like, a, you know... I mean, we got a lot of options, actually. Um, I was thinking about one of these, like the archer's one, you know, the ranged armor piercing damage and ranged damage, um, plus 3% income from industry faction wide. This also gives ranged armor piercing damage and ranged firing rate, but he's not commanding. Um, oh, he almost like, died that last fight. Jeez, I don't, I don't like that. Yeah, let's give this one focus. He gives a little resolve, a little cunning. Bada bing, apply it, done. All right. And he gets actually, if he's a, a Lord of Virtue, he gets the minus 5% corruption faction wide. We should, we'll probably make him one. Uh, general skill points available. We also got Majwa Meng uh, gain skill. Awesome. Um, so we can give her one of these base ones as well. Knowledge of the body. Uh, heal amounts. Um, we can also give, you know, something like she is basically just being put on assignment. So, if she has anything here that gives good, like, in-province or when on assignment um, bonuses, then we will do that. Although, I don't see any. Yeah, I don't, I don't really see any, actually, that she has here. It's all, like, one commanding and whatnot. Um, this is a nice one, though. Insight is plus 10% to research rate, so why don't we uh, angle towards that, and we'll take Insight next turn. Or next time she uh, upgrades. And she, uh, so she, Majwa Meng, she is on assignment. Um, is that her? No, that's Bebe Xiao. Majwa Meng is doing these stimulate markets. Okay. So, yeah, we got a lot of settlements left that we could upgrade. Uh, this guy over here, this army now, I mean, we are in a precarious position, which makes me kind of want to keep the army there. And um, you have taken to the river. I don't want them going for Anding. I mean, we could push into her territory. Right? Like, uh... Like, this is her territory right here on my border. I mean, there's no reason that we can't, like... We could push in, go for the toolmaker, go for the small city, go for the fishing port. Um... And then maybe this army from the north instead of going for looters, can force march down this way in defense, because it'll take them at least one turn to get onto the lands here. That's not a powerful force. And then this army here... I mean, I definitely want to knock out the passes, and I just want to eliminate uh, Dong Pei Shan, but we should probably just finish off this army first, right? I'm not 100 percent sure actually how to because I, I, I don't want to auto I don't want to auto resolve with him being so weak. But this army, I think I can go after the pass this turn. Let's go let's go check out the pass. For the call. Oh, decisive defeat! All right, yeah, these passes are uh, these passes are actually are pretty powerful. I gotta remember that. So yeah, we'll actually, we'll wait until this army is uh, more replenished and, and pretty much got full forces before I uh, before I think about going after that pass again. And I mean, we could, you know, immediately continue in towards her here. I mean, this is all, I don't know if I need this toolmaker, right? Because it's just, it's in a different commandery. Like, I'm thinking I might just try to go straight for this small city. Um... Which only has the, which also has the fishing port, which would be great for food. So maybe with this force we get that advancement going. It's gonna take multiple turns to get there. That's a little surprising. For the people. Like look how little I moved in that one turn. It, even if I go to force march, no effort I mean I barely even move any further. Forward. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get to we'll get to that. we'll get to that city. Um, yeah, this one, you guys are kind of fine for the time being. I love how much industry income you're making here. 
Uh, I do want to upgrade the city once we have the money. Um, but we're actually making 1600 now, which is good. And we should be able to get trade agreements soon once we hit uh, Empowered, which we're awfully close to. Um, yeah, the third army is just huge. It's just it's just a huge uh, a huge buff. So um, why don't we let Ten Yu run out his three more turns here, and we try to upgrade our economy a bit in the meantime, and then once uh, and then we can you know um, go ahead and get uh, yeah, and we can go ahead and get uh, him into the army as well. Yeah, so here we have. Yeah, this is where we're making, we're making a lot of money here. I mean, we could up this, this one that gives some satisfaction, faction-wide, a little bit more public order, and some more income from commerce. We could upgrade this building, which gives uh, some more enlightenment, some more public order, and a little bit of income from all sources. Yeah, why don't we just, why don't we just do that? Uh, that I, I, we'll keep bumping that enlightenment up. And uh, that's pretty much all, yeah, that's, again, that's pretty much all I can do this turn. So let's, yeah, we'll go ahead and move to the next one. We'll see what she does here if she lands on my side of the river or not. Let's see. Any second now, we'll get to her. Here she is. Dong, I couldn't really tell what she did. Dong Pei Shan moved to the pass. Okay, that's fine. I just didn't want them going after Lu Yang. Oh, Jesus. Alright, looters are a huge pain. Uh, Alright, she is on my side of the river. Okay. Yan Shao declared war on Gaogan. Sun Si. Okay, we got some peace treaties. Join the war. Yes, yeah, settlement lost. I know. Heroes aid. Uh, one of your generals will beat six enemies single handedly, largely due to courage. Uh, Gong Du gets a chance to gain an ancillary. Okay. Interesting. Faction development. Looters. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's why I canceled the construction there to get the money back. I had a feeling that was kind of happening. But we got a construction complete. So we got Temple of the Eternal Reason here, um, which gave us a little bit more enlightenment. So you can, or, so you can see um, now we are at 324. And uh, it also gave a little bit more to income from all sources. Just a bit of a bonus. Uh, we also got the uh, ensconced campsites. Right. Alright, this was uh, ensconced campsites. To get encampment fort, we need the reform. Oh, I did not know that. This reform. It'll only take five turns. Alright, that's not that bad. Because um, it's, it's worth it for the mission to get that 8,000. So we'll probably do that next after the two more turns here for local governance, which gives us a local leader and two more administrator positions. Um, traits gains. Gongdu got stubborn. And we got a farmer. Plus 20% food and local commandery. Oh, right. Okay, wait. Who's... We got uh, Bei Bei Xiao right here on assignment. So she's it's already at 14. What if we gave Bei Bei Xiao that farmer? Yeah. Plus 20% food production and local commandery. Give her the farmer. Still making 14. I feel like it should be more. Um, all right. This army. Uh, they did some sort of encampment. Oh, they were in raiding stance. Okay. This army, we must continue now marching south. Um, looters are just all over the place now. Um, I mean, there's no way that I can put an army in each location. And that's like a, that was like a full dang stack that popped up here. I mean, look at this. Um, frustratingly difficult to deal with, these looters. Um, yeah, okay. But this army, we shall continue oh, moving no. forward towards her capital. She wants to come raid my lands, well... I will, will go take yours then. An um, and my army here is almost in position to come help. She, in raiding stance, doesn't have the movement points to reach my city. And you guys, why don't you just, we'll just wait here for the moment and, and, and uh, muster in until um, we recruit in the Tan Yu force to come join you. So we do have a little bit of money to spend. Um, I mean, we could upgrade this building, which is, again, a little more commerce income. Is there anything more worthwhile upgrading? I mean, we up, maybe this one, get double the food production here. Uh, yeah, I think that's... I think that's the one to do. 
um, that is just the border one right here. I don't want to like upgrade it and immediately lose it if she so I might wait a turn to do that. Um, yeah, Woodoo has an upgrade potentially. Uh, this would give another 5%. In oh, we have an open spot in Woodoo. I completely forgot about that. All right, so we have a ton of industry and some silk income here. Uh, in Wudu. So what can we add in? We can add in the Artisan, which gives industry and commerce income. That's a that's a heck of a building. It just adds so much. Um, I mean, we could add in, you know, I don't know, just the communal trade. Uh, we don't have commerce income. Schools, character experience, faction-wide. Um, I mean, we don't need a garrison. Recruitment, don't need it. Like, Temple might not be the worst. Income from all sources, plus some Enlightenment. Headquarters. Esotericism. Mm. I think it's just worth just doing the Artisan. Let's just keep this settlement going as a big-time moneymaker uh, here in Wudu. Artisan just gives so much. I mean, that's 90 base income right off the bat. And the industry side of that will be, up, will be you know, affected, um, obviously. We can only build in Hanzong. So what do we? What options do we have here? We can upgrade a thousand to up to add another hundred to industry income. That's got that's got to be worth it, right? Yeah, hundred percent. All right, we're getting that going. Um, armies are in position. Yeah, they're in strong enough position for the time being. Uh, let's go next turn. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, she doesn't take the. Uh, Farming settlement. Nope, she didn't get Tolerance there. Is the best we can offer. Oh, okay. She wants peace. What is she offering? Just she only has the two passes left. So what is she offering for peace? She is offering an ancillary. The G of the G of an imperial garden is twelve point seven. All right, I want to take a look at what that is before I agree to that. This is oh wow, that's a heck of a ooh, that's an amazing weapon. Wow. That's 1,700 base damage. That is really good. Yeah, I'll, I'll keep that in the trade for sure. What if I just give some, like, stupid, like, you know, stupid ones that I'm never going to use? You know? Like, some of this stuff. That all adds a little bit to what she wants. Okay. So, then, we have... Regular payments of 15. That's kind of bad. And a straight up payment of 22. Um, I mean, how high? Oh, she can't even go over 30%. She just doesn't have, she doesn't have enough to offer me. Like, she just has the two passes, you know? I really want that match GN, but it's not worth peace just for that. Like, she just doesn't have enough to offer me. Maybe a trade of territory. Um, like the Wu Pass. That's worth 37 to you. What if we took out the money? Like, give me the, the... You can keep the Southern Pass. I just don't want you having a pass right in the middle of all my territory here. So, that would be... I get this Wu Pass... I get that Wu Pass province and the G that I want. I just need to make. I just need to add in twelve point eight worth of stuff. All right. Well, first of all, yeah. Let's give you know some stupid. Like these weapons so bad. I'm never going to use that weapon. You know, add in some. Add in some of this stuff. Confirm. That brings it down to six point five. And then she's really poor. So why don't we uh, make a payment? Maybe make a regular payment of like what two hundred per turn? No, not enough. All right, what about uh four hundred per turn? It's more than enough. I mean, I'm I'd be willing to do like you know like uh, three like this just to get to get the province and the really really good weapon. Um, I just think it's worth it. It's a lot of money. I mean, do you want? I can't offer food. That's too bad. Maybe I give a better ancillary. Like, if I remove one of these, why doesn't it... 
What happened to give me? Oh, there's my stuff. Like, what if I gave like a silver armor? Like, that's not really, you know, I don't need that armor. Like, that would be worth more, right? 3.3 as opposed to 2.1. And then we can do, why don't we just do like a make a payment? You know, upfront payment of like 250. Dude, that's just not that much. Upfront payment of, what about, what if I just spent the rest of my money this turn? 500? It's only 1.2. I mean, that's just really not, you know, it's really not a lot. Like, whereas two, I mean, I know 210 per turn is, you know, we can do like maybe like 215 per turn. Just make sure we're not giving any more than we need to. 213, 215 per turn for 10 turns and 500 up front. That's definitely a lot less than, you know, four something per turn for 10 turns. So that's fine with me. Um, plus the ancillaries and the piece, and we get the province and the best ancillary of the lot. Deal signs. We are finished here. All right. Sweet. That is awesome. That is a big, big piece deal. I basically just dropped a bunch of junk ancillaries and, you know, some money. Uh, the money's not inconsequential. But I eliminated the enemy, I took the province, and I got a heck of a weapon. A really, really powerful weapon. Um, so I think that was worth it. And I got the Wu Pass. Oh, I also got this. Nice. Rites of Shual. Shao. Buildings. Lucky Knot's Weavery in Wudu is done. And Traits Gained He got Philanthropic. Cool. Um, Wudu, what lucky not Weavery, yeah, we're making, we're, I mean, we should just keep upgrading this, right? I mean, that's so cheap. Um, that's just, it's just so cheap. Just keep upgrading that. And, uh, she is frustrating me. Um, in normal stance, I can't get to her this turn, so we'll move into Anding and just, uh, defend it. For the turn. Um... And yeah, we'll hit her next turn. This army, if I move to normal stance, we can go attack the settlement this turn. And they have no Bastion artillery. Uh, barricades, they get to hold that turn. Full supplies complete. We'll just continue the siege. Let's uh, get some siege equipment going. It is a level 4 city. Don't want to underestimate it. And uh, this force now, this is not an enemy anymore. Wu Pass is ours as well, which is super nice. Um, so this force doesn't have an immediate threat in the south anymore. Uh, what do I want to do with them? That might be a decision for next episode. Because this one's been, yeah, this one's been going on a pretty good amount. So... I want to thank everybody for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, you know, please uh, leave a like, subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate that. It helps me grow. Um, and yeah, as always, I look forward to seeing everybody next time. Have a good one.